Okay. Take two. This is Dr. Gaunt providing a vlog about the transition from chapter five to six. I have a few things to cover, a bunch of things to cover. I'm going to try and do them very quickly. A few recommendations. The all, all the old ones apply. Make sure you update and keep consistent your work action tracker. Go on the Blackboard page. If you don't know the dates that were changed, they're on there. Look in the link on the left in the Blackboard page, as well as in handouts if you want to download the Excel sheet to update it, which I asked you to do weeks ago, and many of you didn't do. And so some of you are having to pay for getting that done now. Make sure it's impeccable. Write what you need on the back. The other recommendation, to review your notes before you take the quiz. And I would add, start reviewing the handouts. There was a handout on culture that I gave out. It looks like this. And there's this that you can download off the Blackboard. Make sure you start to memorize that along with the definition of the short nitty gritty definition of ethnography that we've been uh, looking at class. Make sure you know that. Memorize it. Um, the other recommendation, which is new, is to reread the syllabus. Uh, and I'm going to give you a little overview of the course. Uh, a paradox of this field of study is that nothing human is alien to anthropologists, it should say, according to the Amer American Anthropological Association. I'm looking at the wrong place. There is the camera. Um, the lived experience, uh, our lived experience is that too many human beings think, feel, believe, and behave as if anything that seems alien, that they read about that's different, is foreign to them. Um, that's different from their learned way of life is actually considered not human. From this standpoint, other cultures seem strange, backwards, wrong, or simply evil the way uh, they are, those others, just shouldn't be. This introduction to cultural anthropology offers a way out of that trap. Um, and it starts with a mantra. We anthropologists have been the first to insist on a number of things. That the world does not divide into the pious and superstitious. Uh, that'll be the religious chapter, you'll see. That there are sculptures in jungles and paintings in deserts. That political order is possible without centralized power and principled justice, without codified rules. So let's talk about that, since that's a great place to transition between chapter five and six. I'm sorry the, the color keeps changing, but that's okay. We'll just deal with it. It's a gray day outside, and maybe there's not enough light. Will this help? Maybe a little. <laughs> um, so just to uh, review, those are the recommendations. Remember, recommendations mean that I say, oh, open that door, and you say, oh, yes, and you don't have to notify me. If you say, oh, I can't open the door right now, you count off, counter offer by telling me by when and what you're asking to counter offer with. Um, if you decline, you must email me before any deadline, and this goes with the counter offer before the expected deadline, before the recommendation of the deadline. You need to contact me by text or call me before you email me unless it's after 9 p.m. Okay, those are the recommendations. Reminder, they're all outlined in your syllabus, so please reread the syllabus this weekend, okay? The whole thing, all 10 pages, okay? I'm gonna send you guys a playlist for how to cite Wikipedia, which I didn't include in the in, um, anywhere, and I'm going to post it on Blackboard. It'll help you with rewriting your drink, drinking ritual, which is due this coming Tuesday. For those people who got their papers back, uh, there were a couple people who had countered offered. You'll give them to me Tuesday, and I'll give you back a revision on Wednesday if needed. Okay? So we have class on Tuesday. Tuesday's Monday. And then Wednesday, we meet our regular time. On Tuesday, since we, I have not realized that was a class day, we're going to um, pick up some of the details of things about economic anthropology, and uh, we may watch a video. We'll see what happens. Um, so um, there was a great thing that came up about the drinking ritual. I want you to remember. You can see the value of people's culture. By those of you who wrote how much this little teeny ritual means to you, imagine if something shifted that was huge in your culture, like a shift in learning a language, 
or a shift in the environment. Um, when we went over this this week, a few people came up, I think Beata in the 230 section asked, where does body lie? And body and biology are a thing that you should consider might exist in environment. Ask yourself, where does it fit in the model of culture? Um, aren't the tools and technologies that you buy for your body? Or if you're somebody who has a unique biology, like you have a disability or um, you're a different skin color than the majority of the people, doesn't that affect what kind of technology and what kind of economic systems you have access to or you create? And the social and political structures. So I want you to consider that environment also includes biology. Okay, so the drinking ritual is a really great thing. It's called a reflexive ethnography where you write about something for yourself. Now we've got to, I've got to get you transitioned to thinking about doing anthropology for others, which is a little more complicated, but has the same ingredients. So we'll see how it goes, okay? I introduced a concept uh, for helping you think about rewriting your drink drinking ritual as well called follow the PMA. I'm gonna put that in this little area here. Follow the PMA, follow the people, follow the metaphor, and follow the artifact, which I spelled incorrectly in class. A-R-T-I-F-A-C-T. -T. You can look up those words if you don't understand them. Follow the metaphor is about follow the language and how it's socially constructed in particular environments. Um, and I'll talk more about that if you have questions you should ask. Um, so um, chapter five was about economic anthropology and you can see just about everything in the barrel model of culture is associated with some aspect of the economy about how we produce things. I think in one of the sections we talked about that um, um, everything we do has some economic impact or value. Um, it costs something if you wait to the last minute. Um, the, you don't pay attention to all the economic values of the water supply that you use and where it comes from and how it's created. That somebody had to make the food that you eat. Um, and uh, this is a great transition into chapter six on political systems, which is about um, the processes of decision making, social control, and conflict resolution that has evolved since we had these adaptive strategy categories, the band, the tribe, the chief, and the state. That came from um, group projects that came, that you, students used to do, they, a student group did a rap, so they helped the, that helped them memorize uh, these different states of evolution in humanity, the band, the tribe, the chief, and the state. And there's a little division which um, life without chiefs will help when you read chapter six to understand that socio-political organization involves the regulation and management of the social structure or relations between groups and their representatives. In the band we have uh, people of influence that are all kin. In the tribe there seems to be, because it's growing by population, there seems to need to be somebody who kind of is looked to as the person who coordinates the social relations, who has some social control but it's still based on influence. Uh, when we get to chiefs, we start to see an inequality in status uh, that's not necessarily based on kin related, kin relationships, uh, and an inequality developed between resources and perhaps more of what we associate with today is the conflict resolution we can see in our state economy where the rich and the poor have different things, where people of different ethnic or racial backgrounds are treated differently and that this creates conflict in our society. So, so political anthropology deals with that at a micro level or at a macro level talking about voting. Don't forget the opportunity to make five points or ten points. Okay. So political means a particular set of beliefs or principles, like people did not buy this newspaper purely for its politics. Um, it also can refer to the politics of assumptions and principles relating to or inherent to a sphere or a thing, like the politics of our classroom or the politics of writing or the politics of representing yourself on Facebook. 
So you can do all kinds of ethnographies, mini ethnographies. You could do the politics of how people write their profiles on Twitter, um, or the politics of gender in representing nude bodies, because that's a big thing you can see on Facebook, all of these people showing off their bodies. What are the politics about that and self-representation? So there's all kinds of things you could do your mini ethnography about. You should start asking questions if you're not sure what to do. Send me emails and I'll answer. So an objective in chapter six is that we understand what it means to study the political aspects of culture and society from an anthropological perspective, from the specific time and place, studying firsthand the personal social relations that people have around control, social control, decision making, conflict resolution, or the regulation and management of relations among groups and their representatives. So if you look on the um, Conrad Kotak website that's on the back of your book, you can see the objectives for the chapter. I'm going to leave that for you to look up this week. And I'll just make a note that um, uh, in this chapter, it begins to talk about the leadership in the, in the band, the tribe, or the chief, and the state. Uh, and a lot of students look like Clifford Garrett's talked about, that we see the lives of others through lenses of our own grinding. They look at the big man and they associate it with something in the state. And you want to try to resist doing that. Try to see them as discrete entities for the moment so that you can analyze how they work and remember how the structures in each of the adaptive strategy typologies works. So remember that in the band, people are essentially all kin. And so um, influence plays a big role, as opposed to some people used to say that um, when Bill Clinton was still in office, that Bill Clinton was a big man. Try to avoid collapsing that right away until you understand the concepts. And so with that, I have a little longer this week. That'll set you up for the coming week. And uh, if you have questions, please, you know what to do. Call me, text, and email me as a last resort. That's always my recommendation. And um, I won't answer after 9 p.m. or before 9 a.m. If, if it's inappropriate. But that's the way I would like you to transact with me. And uh, please ask for what you need. Transact ambitiously. And I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.